All right, and we are live. Welcome to the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose slash Seth Okage. Um, this show is filmed live at 6.30 p.m. on Sundays. Uh, you can find my content over in the description down below, the little link tree down there. Um, you can find the podcast later on podcast services as well as on YouTube uh, as individually cut up segments and the full episodes. There's a Patreon. If you can follow me on Twitter for what my Twitter's turned into fucking food opinion discourse the last week and it's been a good time i i highly recommend it 10 out of 10 uh <laughs> but this week i'm joined by uh cory and blaine how are the two of you doing doing dandy i'm fine w- what are, <laughs> what is what are your opinions on mayonnaise is it the god tier condiment um i very little of it is well a little goes a long way and also my roommate absolutely hates uh mayo well really anything like white cream <laughs> i guess <laughs> um white cream births life Corey. how can you hate that <laughs> <laughs> fucking i knew it was gonna go there i was like as soon as i fucking said it anyway i was gonna say marshmallow <laughs> fluff too because like that shit's delicious mm. yeah I'm not even no, that so big of a shit. He likes, so he yeah. likes like sweet, like marshmallow fluff is fine. But it's like it's like anything like mayonnaise or like sour cream or ranch. Those kind mm. of things he doesn't like. Ranch is hella good. Just despite whatever John might say. <laughs> ranch has its place. I don't I don't really eat it, but it has its place. Alright. Um let's see. Ramen Nomad says, let me tell you one thing I think that people that they would never say is uh, too many people are tweeting about Days Gone. It, man, Days Gone is, this is the most people have ever talked about Days Gone. Like, not even the launch of Days Gone Damn was just fucking was lit. <laughs> I mean, we'll get into it, but but the dude going off about it on the stream, like, he's, he's bringing a lot of attention to Days Gone, and it's not in a great way. I, if, like, if I was a higher up at Sony, I'd be like, dude, can you please just shut your fucking mouth? Um, like someone please get a hammer and get his phone before he just ruins us. <laughs> so as someone who has not really paid attention to whatever the hell is going on, um, enlighten me. Well, you can you can enlighten yourself. There's these things called light bulbs. You turn them on so you can see things better in your room. I hate you. Okay, Amelia Bedelia, you know what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> Puns are good, but that was a little far. I that know. was a stretch. I know. <laughs> I, I apologize to some degree, to a degree some might refer to as minor. You stretched, uh, you stretched but, further than you needed to to plug in that light bulb. Yeah, it, it, it was. <laughs> I apologize to a minor degree, but let's leave my profession uh, gathering coal and other earthly resources to another time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I. But yeah, we're going to jump into Days Gone. That's probably going to be the third story we get to. Um, for now, the big topic of the day is the, I guess, just everything involving Resident Evil uh, 8 slash Village. Woo! So there was a, uh, I'll, I'll just read this right here. Uh, Capcom held another Resident Evil showcase this Thursday, complete with a new look at the Resident Evil Village, the unveiling of a Mercenaries mode, a demo announcement, which uh, I believe me and Corey played. I don't believe you played it, Blaine? Whoa, the demo? Yeah. I played it. Oh, okay, you did play it. Okay. Um, along with that, there's Resident Evil 4 VR, a Dead by Daylight collaboration, and the animated movie Infinite Darkness. Um, so what do, we, what do we want to talk about first? Uh, there's a lot to <laughs> kind of digest. Do we want to go over the new stuff shown in Resident Evil 8? Do we want to talk about the demo? Mm. Uh, yeah, question. We, can, we can talk about the new trailer first, since that's like the first thing that was shown. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and list off some stuff in whatever way we want to split off into naturally. That's that's cool by me. Um, so yeah, the new trailer shit off a little bit more of the game, kind of like hints and gleams at the story, such as stuff like um, everyone in the village seems to be worshipping someone called Mother Miranda. I don't believe that's um, our dearly beloved uh, tall lady. It's going to be some other kind of figure. But even yeah, no. the um, the quote unquote like good villagers, they they still worship her in like some kind of like cult like fashion. Um, I I don't know if this 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 might be demo stuff, but uh, the the plot framing of this is that Ethan is looking for 
uh, Rose, who is his daughter. Is, I, I guess that's like a good little um, plot thing to like kind of drive you forward, I guess. Yeah, because like in well, like in the first one, he was going to try and try to find Mia. So it's always like he's chasing after someone he greatly cares about. I, I will uh, say I will ki- I by default I'm going to care infinitely more about Rose and Mia because I'm going to assume like when you when you get to Rose in the game I'm going to give that baby the benefit of the doubt it's not going to bust out a chainsaw and cut off your fucking arm I I was re- <laughs> I was real yeah. fed up with Mia real freaking early on in Resident Evil <laughs> I'm just like one Ethan you should have not come to this Texas chainsaw looking place you should have just dipped just go. <laughs> Me and my but he, um. But if he didn't do that, he wouldn't get to have the Motel Hell style chainsaw fight in the basement. That, but like, that, also, that's true. also, did wasn't she missing for three years? Yeah, she was already missing for like an extended and period he, of time at and that she, point. Like at that point, hadn't given up and moved on. Is that the time frame? Really? Yeah, yeah it's something like that. Yeah, I thought it was like it's, six it's a months decent amount to of a year. Nah, it's it's longer than that. I mean, don't d- like. Far, far be it for me to be anyone uh, to judge anyone on how long it takes to grieve, but that seems, I don't hey, know, three years. <laughs> hey, all, all I know is me and my girlfriend. It's, it's not even an unspoken rule. We we've we have talked about this explicitly. Like, hey, if we get into a horror type scenario, like basically for the setup of Resident Evil Seven, don't bother. Just dip. Save yourself, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> Goes both ways on. <laughs> honor me by living on <laughs> exactly jeez oh my god um uh what one thing i i gleaned from the demo and the not i'm sorry not the demo the uh, trailer um which i guess obviously from the demo you gotta see it for yourself uh it looks like encounters are going to be a lot more action-based with uh, multiple like faster enemies at once versus seven which is kind of like the mold and they're all pretty slow aside from the liquor ones that are crawling around um yeah. One weird discrepancy I kind of saw, and this is this is probably just generally like a trailer thing. When they were showing off the mercenaries mode, I saw that they were mostly going for like body shots, for like from the hip, uh, versus like aiming down trying to go for the head. And they it looked like they were doing decent amount of damage just because they had like health bars above them, which is mm-hmm. only for the mercenaries mode. It's not for the campaign. So it made me think like, oh, this maybe you don't have to be as accurate, but. Uh, Spoiler warning for the demo, uh, you still have to aim for the head. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to run out yeah, of ammo. Yeah, uh, I learned that the hard way after getting just chewed on yeah. constantly. <laughs> My guess with that is that's like, I mean, I almost I put on my Resident Evil Village is just Resident Evil 4 2 conspiracy cap, but... <laughs> It seems like they're doing a thing like Resident Evil 4, which was like the mercenaries mode is upgraded versions of weapons that those characters have. And like, like I remember playing with like, if you played as Hunk with his upgraded TMP, you could, you pretty much did body shots all day and you would do headshots if you wanted to string like the neck breaker combo and stuff like that. So my mm-hmm. guess is that's what they're doing. Cause we already know that weapon upgrading is going to be a thing in the mercenaries mode mm-hmm. from, based on what they said in the trailer and, and even the getting stronger weapons is going to be a thing too. Mm-hmm. And even the, the base game, it's definitely taking cues from Resident Evil four with that. Mm-hmm. Um, one interesting thing. I, I don't think I saw too many people picking up on, um, uh, all the enemies in the game are very specifically referring to Ethan by his full name, like Ethan Winners. Yeah. So it's not like he's just like some random uh, dude just hanging out in this village. Like they are very conscious of who he is. So even maybe though he going... is just some random dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm sorry to cut you off, Jose, but like this That's is what's good. been driving me crazy since I played the demo. Is that y'all know, and people who've watched the podcast and we talk about it know that I. Every time I let go of my my theory of like, what if this is some kind of bait and like this is actually the Resident Evil Four remake? Because I legitimately believed that for like a hot second, and then like that first big trailer came out, and I was like, okay, no, 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 I was I was just make jumping to conclusions, but then like shit would happen, like, oh, here's this really contrived story thing that doesn't seem like it's actually something they would write and bank on in a game this big. Like when I'm playing the demo and a lot of, without like getting into like actual story elements, like a lot of very contrived 
uh, predictable horror things happen. And not to say that Resident Evil has always been the bastion of fucking subversive and well thought out writing. Lord knows it isn't. But like, there's just a lot of low hanging fruit. It goes right for um, like specifically with when you meet all the people in Louise's house. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm just standing there. I'm going through this sequence in the demo, and I'm just thinking like, it can't be this basic, right? I'm overthinking this, right? And then my brain just goes, but if it's a bait and switch and none of this is either, either none of this is real, <laughs> or if this is all just like he's going to die two cutscenes later and then Leon walks in the door, it's like, mm-hmm. okay, then it'll make sense. But uh, my own craziness aside, I, I'm pretty sure that it, they're probably... I think that there's more to be seen with this game. Not necessarily in my crazy conspiracy theory brain that I just can't let go, but in just in things of like, I mean, we've seen cutscenes where like Ethan's being dragged through a cave uh, by the one dude. Um, and we've seen like little environmental shots of like what looks like in an, an, a cave, like mine or like a factory or something, which again, more Resident Evil 4 vibes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm wondering if I know there's been theories of like, is this just game going to go straight supernatural and they're going to give you barely any connection to like science shit, at, if at all. I'm wondering if the, if maybe that's why there's so, there there's so many things that don't seem like the like what if the bait and switch is not oh it's a not the game that I think it is what if the bait and switch is they do want to do like more supernatural straight supernatural and they're worried that if they come out and do that in the demos in the trailers that people are just going to shoot it the fuck down before they even play it my my guess for that is it's they're not going to go like an necessarily like into the super nitty gritty detail like how the virus specifically mutates them to like coincidentally look like fairy tale fucking monsters or whatever but i think at some level uh we might be giving and not this is the royal we this is just general fan base um res like as you kind of like noted on before resident evil isn't like some bastion of storytelling or subversion it's 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 schlocky b b horror movie Mm-hmm. And it is perfect for doing that. Uh, but, but, um, build, but building off the similarities, you said like kind of like the settings that kind of echo Resident Evil Four. Does that mean we're going to get a laser hallway sequence in first person? <laughs> <laughs> maybe not a laser hallway sequence. Maybe a minecart sequence where he has to like dodge fucking TNT being thrown at him or something. <laughs> Are you going to uh, say that, Corey? I was going to oh, yeah, say. Corey, you go on. No worries. Uh, I was going to say as far as the. Um, Ah, what was it? It was uh, as far as the how, how uh, like what it's actually going to be or whatever. I, I believe somebody actually at the company w- said or at Capcom said uh, that um, it, the story of Resident Evil Village will fall into the universe of Resident Evil and every like it, basically the the overall arching lore of Resident Evil. It'll make sense within that universe. So I think that was like their nod of being like, hey like don't worry it's not actually supernatural it's actually virus related kind of thing see, see now nah, i want him to just be like nah okay <laughs> ethan's got to fight ghosts <laughs> Ghosts. <laughs> he become I, I don't know why i said that with like a fucking chicago <laughs> accent but um <laughs> no no because like i mean i i've said this and this is the thing that i i legitimately believe i hold on to because i think it is where this came from this game really feels to me like it was the team going, hey, remember that Hookman RE4 demo that just never went anywhere because we completely changed concepts, essentially? What if we revisited that? But now that we've established we can do more spooky, scary, like, ghost story kind of stuff, while still tying it back in with, like, the virus and stuff. Like, maybe we can take that even further and specifically go back. Because that's what this whole thing, even playing the demo, it makes me think of, like, are we going to start seeing ghosts? Not literally ghosts, but also if it was literally ghosts, I'd be fine with that too. Fuck it. I mean, Res- Resident Evil 7 was playing like super fast and loose with like the logic of how you're able to see like Evelyn's uh, projections or whatever. Just yeah. Like- it was like, all psychological. Is- yeah. Yeah, it was all psychological, but then you're also like, she had a physical body that would follow you around the house. So mm-hmm. it's like, it, it, it's you. Ha- sorry, spoilers on that like five year old game. Um, but <laughs> you ha- you'd have to like ask yourself like, but wait, is it that she is where that little girl is and she can kind of move herself around even though she's old? Is it one hundred percent a projection and it's just coincidence that like she managed to catch up to you? Like she wasn't actually able to move fast. Mm-hmm. Like 
those are those unanswered things that kind of leave you going, eh. But I will say, to Resident Evil 7's credit, that is one of the most masterful, like, environmental storytelling things I've ever seen in a game, is where you can find the photo of Evelyn in the very beginning, and it has the number on the back. Yep. But because mm-hmm. you have no context yet, you would never think that that's what that is. And by the time you learn about that number, you can't mm-hmm. even look at that photo anymore. Yeah. You know so it's... You know what's funny? On, like, every repeat playthrough, every time you run into, uh, uh, Granny Evelyn, I just pull out my knife, I'm like, I'm, uh, let me stab you, let me just get this over with right here, right now, but the game just won't let you do it, yeah. because, like, friendly fire parameters or whatever game exists. Yeah, yeah, All of that, but also, oh, sorry, Corey, you go on. It's definitely gonna be, um, it, it's definitely gonna be along what, kind of what Blaine said, um, was... Uh, with Resident Evil 7, we really spent a long time, like it feeling that this, that, that, yeah, we know this is Resident Evil game, but it feels way too supernatural or, you know, just freaky. It's just absolutely freaky for a Resident Evil game because usually it's like, oh, it's a zombie infection or it's a parasite or something. And it's, it's pretty obvious that something biological is happening. But with Resident Evil 7, they made it very secretive until the game came out that Mm. it's like this game is borderline supernatural they really started it with the whole like blair witch project style uh camera crew you know they they they, super leaned into the uh they leaned into like the texas chainsaw elements just like what's going on with this family like i don't even actually you know what they they didn't hide the mold. There was one in the demo that you could find it was like it was some demo there was like a follow-up not the initial one Mm mm-hmm um, but they totally hit everything about Evelyn in there too. Yeah, and this is it's really interesting because it's like the what we've seen so far of Resident Evil Village, it, it really makes it feel um kind of Castlevania y, you know? Mm-hmm. A, a, or like or like Helsing kind of. And I like that. I think a lot of people really wanted like, you know, the old monsters, like lichens and vampires and oh, yeah. stuff in there. Um because it's just like there is something uh, horrifyingly mis- mystical about those creatures, and so oh, yeah. it's I I do believe there is a biological reason and there is a virus involved, but I don't think we're going to even suspect it or even know what it is until the very end. Just like in seven, you know, we're not even going to realize what's going on until the very end. I mean, even uh, Ethan is just like I, one of my favorite parts of the demo is when he jumps out a window, and, he, and he's just like, "God damn it!" He basically says his own version of the Die Hard Two line, like, "How could the same <laughs> shit happen to the same guy twice?" <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, um, I, I guess going back to the point from before, it's yeah. uh, j- just it's just like speculation. I don't know uh, for this stuff. But yeah, they're like super specifically addressing Ethan uh, by by his full name and the fact they took his daughter. I'm yeah. going to assume it's not even maybe necessarily about him because they don't they seem to that care about super him. Supercut in the trailer of all the different villains saying Ethan, Ethan, yeah. Winters, Ethan Winters, Ethan Winters, Ethan Winters. <laughs> like, <laughs> again, it's like how every time someone would say Leon Kennedy in Resident Evil mm-hmm. Four, but it means mm-hmm. nothing because Ethan is a nobody. To us, anyway, he's a nobody. Yeah. Like, do y'all, do y'all? This is my question to you guys. Do y'all think that they could, through this game, build him up to be like on the level of like Leon or Chris or Jill or? Claire? To be fair, just like within the context of uh, what what he personally accomplished in Resident Evil Seven, that that's damn near comparable to what everyone else has gone through. No, it is. Also, I I have a very strong feeling that at you know if you've played. The not a hero DLC for Resident mm-hmm. Evil uh, Biohazard. Um, I have a I feeling that, that everybody, yeah, right. Everybody, basically, all the baddies in Village are connected to um, Lucas somehow because I f- they're part of the collective. Because how else would they have known about Ethan Winters? You know, I'm sure he, I'm sure Lucas reported on everything and all of his findings and everything he was dealing with with Ethan Winters. Oh, don't worry. Every uh, once I take care of Ethan, he won't be a problem anymore. And he's like sending them files. I I just have a strong feeling that it's yeah. Because be, we know because you know. we know that there was some kind of because what the people that were work, that were hired Lucas were very clearly trying to start up some 
B.O.W. shit again. Mm-hmm. Um, the assumption is that it, because the, the whole thing was what it was, Blue Umbrella was the made up of the people that left Umbrella and wanted to make good on what happened. So, okay. Right. Allegedly, we still don't even know if that's true or not. Mm-hmm. Um, we know Chris was working with them after uh, whatever it was called fell apart. And then the I BSA, like, the BSA, like just fell apart or whatever. Um, and now Chris is supposedly allegedly evil. So can, can yeah, we talk I mean, about that very specifically? I think people seem to, I think people have either not played seven or they seem to forget Mia does not die from five head from, from, from five bullets. She yeah, you fight her thing. multiple times. It takes a lot to just like temporarily stun her. She like, if that's Mia, like legit Mia, she's fine. She's good. Well, that, that's like well, a slap on the wrist. But she also got the vaccine, and it's yeah, like, and that's like the canon one of that is that she got the vaccine so that she was is no it, longer under. Was that just to get rid of uh, whatever traces of Evelyn's controllers? It's still in her. I guess we don't really know because even oh. um, mm. if you want to bring up Resident Evil Six, but Sherry. Uh, she had the vaccine for the G virus, but she still has it in her. Like she still has like their generative abilities and whatnot. Real okay, that I didn't. Oh, was that in six? Yes. They established that. Okay. Yeah. Um. So then I guess it's open to debate. I know that. I know that we already. It is already a stretch that what's her name with no medical background shoves a, a hand and a head into sorry a hand and like a fetus into a food processor and that's oh no like no sorry like a coffee grinder and that somehow makes a vaccine <laughs> <laughs> actually wait yeah yeah no that did and then what did ethan do later he took the other thing that w- which would kill uh evelyn and he had the, his own little special box for that mm-hmm. but i don't know i don't but, know um, it, i I'm, I'm just gonna call it okay actually you know what this is what I have been on record for saying before, and I'm still going to stand. I'm basically just going to echo what I said before. Mm-hmm. I don't believe this game is going to be some subversive thing where they suddenly turn Chris into some kind of villain. Like this is literally, I'm, I'm going to call it. This is literally the plot of the fate of the furious. Vin Diesel was was pretending to be a bad guy. That's all I'm saying. Oh yeah, of course it is. I'm gonna be real. I think anybody who actually thinks Chris is has gone bad is lying to themselves. But like, as far as how heavy, heavily their shit hit, like their their uh, uh, how thick they're laying it on. Mm-hmm. Considering how thick they're laying it on, it, it really it's all doesn't marketing. seem like he's actually. Evil. And I, I'm not going to be specific about this. I looked up one very specific detail because I just wanted to get it out of the way to know if it was true or not. I'm not going to say if it was, but glad I looked it up. That very specific thing. Um, I think that's about it for the trailer, though. Do you, do you guys want to move on to the demo, I guess? Wait, what was the thing you looked up, though? You said you weren't going to tell us the answer, but you didn't tell us the question. Do you do you want to know? Like what Corey, at least what the question know? was? I, I kind of do now. Oh, you know what? I did talk to Corey about it. I forgot. I want to know the question. I don't want to know the answer. I can't control my face. That's the issue. <laughs> I'm not going to... Well, I'm not going to... I'm not going to ask you anything. I'm just... Just no, tell no, me what you look like. No, 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 no. Be- because I, I, I know this. Like, um... Here, I'll close my I, eyes. I, I, I have very mild-ish Tourette's. I can't control my face, like, whether I'm bullshitting or if I'm telling the truth. It's all good. But I looked up if Werewolf Chris is a thing. Okay. I know the okay. answer. Okay. Okay. That, so that's, that's all, all I'll need, say. That's all we need to know. <laughs> can I uncover my eyes now? Yes, yes. you can uncover your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Anyway, let's let's talk about that demo. Um, <laughs> this is something I kind of gleamed even from uh, even from the trailer, but definitely playing it hands on, it's it's kind of solidified. This feels infinitely more um, action oriented than seven. Like seven was like very purposely clunky with, with even like the the camera speed, the movement speed, like ev- even like every little gun as you're walking with it has like this super crazy exaggerated sound effect with it. Um, but this just plays yeah. so smooth and it's not necessarily going to be like a call of duty shooter, but it's 
definitely more oriented for for action. Even the uh, like menu controls feel like they're more ready for you to just like okay back in the game. Like when I was going to craft ammo and uh, health, the only thing that stopped me from jumping back and forth was not realizing what uh, what was the counter for how many supplies you have and whether you can craft it or not. Like I thought I was using something up when I wasn't. But mm. like the actual going back and forth in the menus, getting back to the game was all so snappy and quick. Along mm. with the shooting and reloading and everything else. The um the the vibe I'm kinda getting from the I guess I was already kinda getting it from the trailer, but also this. Um it looks like they're taking the best of both worlds and that it's gonna have the atmosphere of seven and still have like those stalker type enemies like we saw from that first demo. Um mm. with the vampire lady chasing you around. But it's also taking basically the gameplay formula of four, which I'm all down for. Yes. And it and I, I don't know what triggers it. I, 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 I'm guessing it's uh, a parry window, but you, you can parry attacks. You so can? You're, you're, yeah, so it's, it's not just um, you're not just mitigating damage when you block. Um, but if because if, if, I did, I pulled it off a couple times. You do it at the right time. You just straight up push them away from you. Really? Yeah. Because I is saw that crazy. they, because they, because they, I saw that they implemented, you know how Resident Evil 7's aiming system was like the precursor to Resident Evil 2 remake and Resident Evil 3 remake. Mm-hmm. This feels like an evolution of two and three remake. Like they have the whole if you take if you slow down and take shots, you have better aim, but your aim shot to shot doesn't feel quite as bad as it did in. Like they don't. It seems they want you to still take your time for critical shots, but they don't want you to feel like you have to do that at every moment. They want you to be able to, like, no, you're going to be getting caught in a firefight every once in a while. You're going to have to go pop, pop, pop. Mm-hmm. Which I think uh, is th- interesting as hell. I I was actually interested to see how they were going to implement um, that that DLC from Resident Evil Seven, the Not a Hero, because when you're playing as Chris, you don't even have to worry about like the. Um, the reticule going small like it's, it's just all oh yeah like aiming down sights it's it's a lot more action it was a shooting that gallery way. essentially which i thought was fantastic mm-hmm. uh you had something you wanted to say Corey? i was gonna say um no i i i really did uh enjoy so far what we've seen of the first level of the demo um it was funny because uh ish was literally counting down for me uh the 30 minutes that i have and he's like every time i would slow down to read like a piece of paper or something (laughs) on a table he's like okay come on we don't have time to sightsee i was like what i want to try and absorb as much as i can left corey come (laughs) on i i felt so rushed for it because like the entire time like because i was streaming it also so i'm just like i want i want to get as much of this out of that as i can but i want to be entertaining but Mm -hmm. it was um like usually in like ev- every game I play, I take my sweet time. I want to look at like every little nook and cranny, even though there's not necessarily items. Mm-hmm. Like apparently there's a shotgun and a lo- and a landmine that yeah. I just did not find. Y'all so, didn't find the shotgun, huh? I found no. the shotgun. Okay, so I okay, went. Wait, where I was, was running? I was running away from the wolves, and it's literally the house next to the house that you go to where you find what's her name elena elena right and yeah. her and her father. It's literally like the house left of that, and. I went in and I found like ammo and like a gunpowder and like a landmine and a shotgun. And I was like, Oh, okay. I didn't find the landmine, <laughs> but I was also having issues with my brightness then. So I could have just missed it. Yeah. Uh, the shotgun didn't do much because it had one shell in it. Yep. And <laughs> then I, I, uh, I, accidentally placed the landmine in a very tricky position and then i picked it up and never got to use it again and then i just start and then i just ran i didn't even kill any enemies because one i kept missing i'm a terrible shot and because i have to i have to like get used to first person resident evil all over again and so i'm like missing just by like centimeters Mm-hmm. all around the enemies and then i'm just like you know what screw this i'm running <laughs> and i ran to that <laughs> i ran to that house it, it oh what's, what was sticking out to me that uh, I, maybe I just haven't played a console shooter in, in a hot minute because I was just potato aim all over the place, <laughs> missing every shot. <laughs> I managed to kill uh, one of the werewolves with, with just my pistol. And then I got halfway through the second one before I had to just pull out my knife. And it's just like a complete war of attrition. Just like, how many times can I heal versus how many times can I poke him? Um, pro tip, getting into a knife fight with a werewolf is not a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. it, it didn't occur to me mentally f- for whatever reason just like hey 
you can probably just run away from this fight. And sure enough, the second you get close to that house, um, the werewolves just uh, the one that was chasing me just like despawned from like right behind me just to like mm-hmm. start that little cutscene or whatever. But so at least I know that for when I play the base game, they just don't waste uh 20 bullets it definitely um i will say this much the demo it there were multiple areas that i felt like uh clearly they are this is a piece of the game that they're really restricting a lot because there were like areas that i feel like you could you could have gone through like there were other gates i feel like you could have opened or gone through oh uh, by um by louise's house i was confused because on the map it shows that there's like this pathway but it was like blocked by a barrel or um yeah some stuff they literally they they just they knew what they were doing when they made these demos basically it's like they they literally are shoving the player into a 30 minute linear like do this puzzle uh uh encounter encounter these enemies go through these cutscenes, and then you're done solve this puzzle you're then you're done and it's like that's that's actually brilliant. Like, it, I mean, obviously you can go and you can separate uh, levels of a game. If you know you have all the assets, you just literally separate levels of a game, and then you just cut off any other progress uh, pathways that you can to just shove the player through uh, a, a, an intended experience. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it was smart in that, and like in, in the creation of demos, that was kind of a a smart design. What did you think of? Um... Ethan is so much more emotive and talkative in here than he was in seven. Like seven, he had like some kind of grunts, like whenever he'd get like slashed by a chainsaw or whatever. I think he's just tired of this shit, man. (laughs) He he is so fed up. He's just like, why is this shit happening to me? This village is fucked. What the fuck is going on? Like, I I honestly, for a second thought it was Troy Baker. I thought it sounded like him, but it's, um, shoot. I didn't type down the name. Let me look it up real quick, but it's not Troy Baker. Yeah, it's the same person. Seven, um, the voice well, actor. You, well, while you're looking that up, Corey, when you were in that house where you found the shotgun, did you notice that you could press X on a dresser that was, like, by the door where you came in? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, I was trying to, like, I even shoved the, oh, I did shove that dresser. Like, I saw it, and then I was, like, I ran out and lured the the werewolves out of that house because I was getting surrounded, and then I, like, looped back around them and went back in and, like, mashed uh mashed my like whatever button the action button is on playstation um uh and then and like i shoved the dresser in there so it stopped them momentarily but then there was a boarded up window that another one came crashing through in that house so it i didn't, didn't know really that was a them. thing because because when i fought them i just kind of stayed in the fields i, I didn't even think about going back they are scary they are scary even if you block even if you block yourself off in like a house they will literally claw their way in any in, by any means necessary. Like I'm, I'm just saying, house you find a shotgun in, you can block a door. What's that <laughs> remind you of? Brings- <laughs> yep. Yep. You're not wrong. Yeah. That's true. It's, it's like there's de- it's like the developers at Capcom are specifically trying to drive me insane. <laughs> Wait, what, but what's wrong with Resident Evil 4? Nothing's wrong with Resident Evil 4. It's just the fact that I keep letting go of these crazy theories I have, and then little things like that happen, and I'm like, but what if? <laughs> but what if? <laughs> but what if I'm not crazy? I am. Uh, sure I have a. F- and also, here's the thing. Like, I already know that Chris Red. We already know that Chris Redfield from the beginning is a big part of it because he was like, you know, he was the big surprise at the end of Resident Evil 7. However, I have a feeling that they're going to try and one up themselves and have a, another original resident evil character cameo in this game. I just don't know who that might be. Who would you, who I mean, do you think would be overdue for an appearance? I mean, I know who I think is overdue for an appearance. Barry. Jose, do you have any? <laughs> Barry <laughs> mother fucking burden. Well, <laughs> yes. No, that is true. Well, no, Barry Burton got to be in Revelations 2, a game that I have not played past the first episode. You know, I, I, I would I my my legit answer was going to be Claire because what was it? She was in two, um, Veronica, and then I, I kind of constantly forget that Revelations, she was in Revelations is even a thing. Too, yeah, she, yeah. she was in two. Yeah. I would say Jill. I would say Jill because she's hardly I mean she was in Revelations one, but like She's Chris's yeah. bud too. As so. as far as a a playable character she got she got resident evil one One. she got resident evil three and then 
and then rev and the revelations and then i guess if you count the like the extra mode where you play as her oh the little the dlc Re thing yeah the for dlc five. for resident evil 5 and i guess that, that counts was great. yeah um then I, yeah i guess that counts but still like i feel like she's definitely overdue for like some good uh game placement because every game that she's been placed in periodically just doesn't do well not because of her character or who she is it's literally just wrong place wrong time for the, for the record for five five generally does not do jill much justice especially in her boss was, that's what i'm saying <laughs> she deserves like an actual chance to be in the spotlight she, like, she was a badass she, she was a badass in the three remake freaking shoving um that rail gun just like right in nemesis's face just blowing him up oh yeah this is true but like again marketing wise Resident Evil 3 was really just like kicked to the t kick to the curb, both with the original and the remake. It wasn't as popular as the second one. Mm -hmm. So it it's just like she deserves to be in a game that's actually going to be like successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, she wasn't in six, so I, I guess she got a favor done in her in her corner. Um, I think I agree with you because it's weird. It's like Resident Evil 3, the original got a rough deal because that was the whole it was meant to be a spin-off and then was forced to be a mainline sequel and I love it but I know that there are people maybe that it wasn't exactly what they were expecting when Code Veronica was more like the next step in the series and then and then um sorry I was getting someone started in chat but um <laughs> um that's, but then, that's like, the, the that would be three... that would be my boyfriend by the way <laughs> oh hi ish <laughs> We love you, Ish. Wesker still lives. Hashtag the truth is out there. Hashtag I want to believe. Hashtag the sunglasses don't lie. Hashtag um, <laughs> the volcano wasn't. I, I don't know. Um, the Resident Evil Three remake had also the rough deal of like when we found out that apparently that was supposed to be packaged with Resident Evil Six. I'm sorry, Resident Evil Two, and that God that would have improved Resident Evil Six. <laughs> but um I, I a can't lot talk of things would have improved that game, that game. <laughs> i can't talk that much shit about it i haven't played it i okay. know it's on sale though it's so i i give you permission I don't um know. jose let me like eight bucks uh but <laughs> <laughs> but um but no where was i going with this oh um but it has it had and you know like resident evil 3 remake is not perfect i really enjoyed it but again like it wasn't perfect it wasn't even a as much as I loved it first playing it, I have to kind of concede like it was not an amazing remake of the original game. Right. And it was funny. It's funny because like. I, wasn't there something there was something like fairly recently where people were like, release a director's cut of Resident Evil 3, the remake, because we we deserve more content than that. I, and I, just, I mean, and I mean, <laughs> that's a little probably, entitled. I know it's, it is a little entitled, but it's like they it's cut so out, they cut out whole levels. Like the clock tower level was like one of the best levels in that game. I and know. they completely I'm, I'm, cut it. I'm going to say my piece on it. And then we'll, we'll get into some of the other stuff, but um, I don't know. Like it, I, for what Blaine was saying, it, it's, the Resident Evil 3 remake is basically doing exactly what Resident Evil 3 did and that people didn't like it as much. It's kind of like the weird black sheep in that regard. And yeah. for what it's worth, just that game as an isolated experience is it's it's a hell of an experience. It's it for sure is. It, it's a it's a damn good game. It, it's not the same. I, I don't want to call Resident Evil 2 like Metroidvania, but just for the sake of the, that conversation, where you know, you're constantly going back and forth. There's light elements in that three, but it's far more linear. But Damn good game. Uh, I will say, because Chibum is asking in the chat about there's director's cuts in video games. I don't think director's cuts exist anymore. I think director's cuts of video games were an early concept when video yeah. games were still er like babies. You know, when uh, it was still uh, early. Somebody the hasn't played Sonic Adventure DX on the Nintendo GameCube, Corey. There's also Resident <laughs> Evil, the director's cut. That no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. When mode. game, when video games were young, then they, they, there definitely was a, a merging of ideas yeah. and and phrasing within the video game company that people probably who worked in the film company were transferring their knowledge over to. Because um, a lot of early video games sort of take on cinematic. Yeah. Uh, you know cinematography at their time um and and as time has gone on we've seen 
video games it just become more and more cinematic, but we don't have director's cuts of video games really anymore. Hashtag release. Oh, hashtag on, re- hashtag release a Snyder Cut of Resident Evil 3 remake. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I uh, want a 12 hour game. I want an. <laughs> <laughs> or no, I want a 50. I want, sorry, not 12 hour. I want like 50 hours. I want an, I want like a Resident Evil oh, 3 <laughs> experience. All right. And, we, nem- we and Nemesis gets crucified at the end because it's a yeah. Jesus allegory. Um, <laughs> All right, Blaine, uh, say your piece so we got to move on. My brain fucked up. I don't even remember what I was going to say. Hold, hold on. I might be able to reclaim it. Oh, um, not Fear Effect. Um, Fatal Frame 2, I think, is the last instance I can think of of a game that got a director's cut. The Xbox release, if I remember correctly, was called Fear... uh, I keep wanting to say Fear Effect because I'm too obsessed with that game. Um, Was Fatal Frame 2, uh, whatever, Butterfly, and then director's cut. Um, I used to own it. I actually gave it to a friend. Well, sold it to a friend. For a yeah, it's, it's it's sort of like it, it's sort of like uh, back then. It, it's it's different. The way that video games are made now are are definitely different than video games were made then. And I feel like maybe the director of a video game had more of a say of like, like okay, you guys made the original. Like uh, here, how about I go back into the editing room. Or you know the you know the game making room whatever you want to call it, <laughs> uh, and, mean, just, <laughs> and just like you know, is, do a, a cut of my own. So well, and the term is so nebulous even in the film industry. Like as well as like the the director's cut of Blade Runner that's not even really a director's cut. It's like an editor's cut. Mm-hmm. And you know, but we we could literally literally sit here all day talking mm-hmm. about it. Jose, what's the next topic? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go over some of this other Resident Evil news real quick. Um, Mercenaries is making a return. The last time it was in the series was with Resident Evil 6. Um, I don't think people give Resident Evil enough credit for basically starting uh, the entire like horde frenzy that like Gears of War kind of popularized, and that's why it's literally called horde mode. And that like that's that's just the generic term people apply to it whenever it's in other games. Um, Technically, it was in Resident Evil 3 first, but I think most people probably prescribe it to Resident Evil 4 as being where it really got good. Um, I think for this game being more action-oriented, it makes sense for it to actually be back in here. And if you just want to get some fun arcadey gameplay versus replaying the entire game, I think that's a damn good addition. I'm happy it's back. I also I also would like to state that, I th- uh, that uh, if it weren't for Resident Evil 7 and also the likes of uh, PT, we wouldn't, we wouldn't probably have been getting like the slew of first person horror games for the past, like five, uh, like six some odd years uh, that have started to I come say out pretty frequently. I want to say some of that you c- we can probably chalk up to a bit of happy coincidence. I would probably pin it more on stuff like uh, amnesia and outlast because e- even by the time That's that true. PT kind of like, kind of like kind of, uh, dropped i believe that was it was e3 2014 or 15 it was before res not resi it was before metal gear solid 5 came out uh so it was either 2014 2015 it, it came out and uh resident evil 7 was already like in active development they had that kitchen demo so it's not necessarily like they rushed um or, or like shifted development just because they saw uh pt drop yeah. No, yeah, for sure. Um, I think I you, know what you're yeah, saying, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It played a part in showing. I feel like it did. Yeah. that it was mm-hmm. something that people still wanted, even if the people who owned those properties didn't really do the right thing. With but I, you know, I, but you know, what I'm getting at it's like I see, I see this this shift, uh, sort of yeah. in the in the horror genre of video games. You know, we see, we see a lot, we see a lot, and I, I think also now. You could say that for you could say that for like other genres too. So like I feel like more, for instance, I feel like Animal Crossing sort of either continued on or started this new fad of like uh, village life video games taking on more of a three dimensional mm-hmm. cutesy look. And I can also probably blame that on on the art style of Pokemon too, because mm-hmm. uh, then we see uh, you know then we see games like Story of Seasons appear. So it's like. I, I, you know, uh, 
certain games start out a fad in the gaming industry and then it yeah. carries on and carries on until people just don't like it anymore and they want something fresh and new. Mm-hmm. There's at least one other game other than Story of Seasons that also does that whole like, oh, so it's start like a town or a farm, but build it yourself mechanic. Right. Um, or look at like how Breath of the Wild influences things like Genshin Impact and other shit. Uh, yeah. What was it? Immortal Phoenix Rising. Exactly. Uh, what did you think of, um, so, so we know that like weapon upgrades and even character upgrades are going to be a thing in, um, like even in the main story, which, you know what little tidbit I learned from, uh, the, I was listening to the game informer podcast. I guess they have some exclusive coverage of it, whatever. Uh, you can upgrade Ethan by going on like little, not hunting missions, but you can hunt animals and that's how you have, you specifically have to do that in order to, um, to upgrade yeah. yourself that's why i'm convinced that's that like nuts. that's what i'm convinced because like the map is huge and i feel like we're getting set up for kind of like an open world-esque like situation and i have a feeling that if you're hunting and stuff the there might be some like side stuff you can like side missions mm-hmm. that you can actually do there's gotta be like you know how the gates get closed on you at the beginning of the demo there's got to be like a whole other area that before, because we know that we stop at where you go to the castle and there was like a door to like a mill or something, which you're mm-hmm. assumedly, and there was, I think one other, one or two other locked gates in that little area. But mm-hmm. like, there's just got to be like a whole forested area then if they're going to do that. Cause that just sounds that I didn't even know about that. That sounds fucking crazy. Right. Mm-hmm. And Ooh, one thing I'm also looking forward to is cause, because we're getting treasures back, which I'm so freaking stoked. Oh, about. Yeah. So like just the fact it's cur- there's currency and there's treasures. Now it's my favorite. And then also like what totally surprised me was the Duke's kitchen. Like I was like, you could freaking cook stuff in this game. Mm-hmm. I was like, Oh my God, there's a cooking simulator. In Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, there's a good game. I'm just like, oh my god, this is amazing. So, and you just, you can cook stuff to like, what is it? Like to feed him and he'll pay you money for the recipes or something that you make for him? I, I think that might be for the like permanent upgrades. I'm not too sure though. But yeah, so it's like stuff like that really. Uh, either Either the game is going to be very long and stretched out because you have to collect money and and treasures and stuff like that. And there's just going to be a lot of secret areas that you can find treasures in just like Resident Evil four, or there's going to straight up be side missions. What did you think of, um, what did you think of like maybe some of the roguelike aspects that are going to be in, uh, that's going to be in mercenaries. Just like the temporary little upgrades. We can get like increased movement. You can like, uh, spec into like specific gun trees and whatnot and uh, it's not the main campaign it's not going to be like a permanent thing it's just like built like going for like specific builds based on like whatever's um spawning there for you right and the be- i feel like the best thing is is going to be multiplayer if that's the case for for mercenaries because i you know it, it's you got to play with your friends you got to be able to play with your friends i don't think they've announced it but I, I think the favorite thing for me in Mercenaries, um, because I, 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 th- I still kind of like how how cheesy it was in Resident Evil um, 4, because you could play as like Leon, you could play as Ada, and then they just let you play as like Krauser, who, who's not a protagonist in that game, and you just get and access Wesker. to this. Yeah, you, you can play as Wesker too, and it's freaking. And Hunk. It's nuts. <laughs> um, it if you can I only play as, if you can only play as Ethan, that that's fine, but. I, I would like it to embrace that wackiness a bit. Well, mm-hmm. here's the thing. Can we play as Lady D? If that's a yes, can we upgrade her heels for stomping? Can we upgrade <laughs> her claws? <laughs> we already know that we have a color for her underwear. Does that mean that we can unlock like different underwear for armor? I'm just saying. Ask like, the real question. Because yeah. the, nature, the nature of mercenaries, plural, is that there are multiple characters that you can play as. Um, I think one of them, I think obviously you'll get to play as Ethan, but I think obviously you'll also get to play as Chris. Um, that's just like a given. Uh, but yeah, I think yeah. that would be interesting to be able to play Especially as like Especially if we're basing Lady off of like Resident Evil 7 and how that worked. Like I would be yeah. surprised if we didn't have at least a sequence as Chris. Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. And then, I, you know, I think that would be interesting to play as Lady D or like play as one of the daughters or something. Are we, are we like, just calling her Lady D now? I don't know how to pronounce her last name. <laughs> Dimitrescu. Tall lady. Dimitrescu. It's, it's the same reason I used to call Gascoin Gascoin. Or I said, like, no, I used to call him Father Gastown, which was fun. I mean, uh, 
and then I was going to say, as much as I, I do, uh, I love the whole, you know, currency being back and the Duke is really cool, like of a concept. I am going to miss the, uh, you know, what are you buying? What are you selling? What are you buying? <laughs> Hello, stranger. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to miss that. I am terribly, terribly going to miss that. I will say, um, as cool as I think everything is, I do think it, I want to mirror things I've seen. I think I've seen Justin say this from the SDGC, but I think it is kind of shitty that they went right for like, look at this, like the fat opulent. He's so fat, his fat rolls out of the thing. And it's very clearly kind of doing a not great thing with it. Even if it's not super shitty, they're still just kind of doing a whole, like a greedy, you, you know what I mean? What I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah, a Duke, you know? A, yeah, yeah. And a, it's, and it, 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 that feels gross. But at the same time, I still enjoy like everything else about the game. I just wanted mm. to mention that. Cause I feel like it is important to still mention that shit. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Um, I guess let's move on to the movie real quick. Um, any thoughts on Infinite Darkness? It's uh voice cracked right there. I, I had a fucking YouTube comment. <laughs> fucking call me out on that shit. Is like, uh, is that are you the top of his puberty for the second time? Is that <laughs> some, <laughs> something like that? It, it was like literally at the top of the segment, like as the video starts, my voice cracks. I'm like, fuck. You tell that commenter <laughs> I am the only one allowed to criticize your speech patterns. Okay. I okay. I, I mean I, I didn't hide the comment. I just literally probably just like. It happens, man. I'm sad. What, what, what do you want me to say? <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> no, but um, uh. Infinite Darkness. In, in, sorry, I messed up my words there. Infinite Darkness uh, looks really uh, fun, honestly. Um, yeah. It it. I like that it's following Leon and Claire. I love that they got the actor, the voice actors from Resident Evil Two, to do it. Um, you know, it's 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 sort of a few years after Resident Evil 4, which is a storyline that I think everyone loves. So it's going to be interesting. Also, it's going to be interesting to see Ashley again if they do, in fact, show her. They have to show her. Yeah, like if- for um, for, for those that don't know, the um, the president in that movie, like it, the movie takes place like at the White House. It's a zombie outbreak there. Uh, the president is the same pr- president that's uh, Ashley's dad. His and that's name gonna- is President. Yes, Sorry, <laughs> not not the same president that Leon shoots in the head because he turns into a zombie, and that's not good. Uh, and that's from Resident <laughs> Evil Six. That's that's a different yes, president. Is. I've mm-hmm. played that demo. I know what he's talking. About. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I want there to be a conversation at some point where for the president puts his hand on on Leon's shoulder and he says, "Leon, why didn't you fuck my daughter at the end of Resident Evil Four? She was <laughs> oh she God. wanted you to." No, we can be family, Leon. Barely an adult, and that would have been gross. Yeah, I mean, she's probably an adult, but, yeah. cap- but I, Japanese I, companies are weird, man. I I believe she was twenty in there. I I can look it up, but yeah, I guess no, no, no. I, I'm not even. I'm not saying like, oh, out there. If you have like done this, you're fucking gross. I just mean, I just feel it's one of those I mean, like they. They try to make her diminutive and kitty, even though she's very clearly not. She's like an adult, so it's like, eh. Yeah. I I think she underestimated Leon's ability to be the uh, Chad virgin. Well, no, because he has something with Hunnigan. That's what I like about that whole thing. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a thing with him and Hunnigan. girl on his lap, but instead it's like, no, I want to go for, like, the trophy wife that's over the radio. Yeah, but she never does anything. You, you um, want to also? Does hey, he she takes her glasses off at the end. No, I'm sorry. Enough. I'm sorry. Leon, Leon may be a little flirty boy here and there, but he he never acts on it. He, he has he has virgin. all these ladies pining for him. He's got Literally. well, Claire's not really pining for him. Claire's just sort of there. I feel like he could go for Claire, but she might be like, you know, mm, I got too no, much no, things going do, on. Do, I'm do a, you, you know, I'm I'm focusing on myself right now, Leon. Sorry, like that's you they're the friends that I, get each other wait. hookups with other people. <laughs> yes, do, yes. Do, do you at the end of Resident Evil Two remake when you whenever you do the second run or whatever, you get the true ending. Uh, Sherry's like, "Are you two like boyfriend and girlfriend?" And Claire's like, "Oh, I don't know." And Leon's like, "No, I'm the eternal virgin." <laughs> he, he literally <laughs> stared into the camera and said that. You can look it up on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, um, um, quick, just, quick fact: I guess busy. Ashley was twenty and, and four. Not that that really changes it, I guess. Yeah. I mean, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I maybe maybe Leon is ace, and that's totally valid. Like maybe yeah, he's maybe. Over. You know, he maybe he just has too much going on. He can't think about that stuff. You know, he's thinking of too many good jokes and puns. Exactly. 
Um, I, I've never really seen any of the animated um, Resident Evil movies. I guess I probably should at some points. I, I don't like if I remember correctly, the first two weren't necessarily great. But then again, I I have all the live action Resident Evil movies and those are not great and I still enjoy them. So yeah. I should probably you just know, bite that you, bullet. You do Your know at some you do know at some point that uh, where Leon is, uh, Ada will soon follow. So we're mm-hmm. definitely going to see Ada in Infinite Darkness, I feel. I, what's the Resident Evil animated movie where Leon's like, it, no, it's Chris is like in a gunfight with a dude. And it's literally like the most Matrix ass shit in the world. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, just like running around around, they're running around each other, shooting at the ground. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> that's damnation, I think. Yeah. Ugh, I need to watch that. I have... I have the the, the 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 I have the earlier one on my wall somewhere on Blu-ray because I bought it when I was like seventeen, um, and that I think that's called Degeneration, or something. Um, it's and it, it's the one where there's an airport and a zombie outbreak happens. Yeah, and Leon and Claire are there. Like it's basically it's basically like the same basic premise of the newest one coming out, but way le- but way more contrived. Well, this one is like no actually thought out. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Man, well, that I, one was a movie. This is like a. This is gonna be a full blown episodic series. Yeah, it looks neat. I I, mm-hmm. I I have no like expectations of it. The animation looks good. Um, I'm interested to see where that goes. If there's cool fight scenes. I'll be down. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about Resident Evil Four VR. And I, I just I just want to preface this. I have, I I have like legitimately like ten or eleven versions of Resident Evil Four already. This is my favorite game of all time. I don't necessarily play all these versions frequently. I think like the last one I touched was the Switch version. I own Resident Evil Four on the GameCube, the PS2, the Wii, the PS3, the 360, Xbox One, PS4, the original PC ports, uh, the PC HD ports. And the Switch. So, yeah, I guess 10, 10 copies I own already. <laughs> but, have but a I... physical PC port? No. <laughs> okay. That, I, do not, I, I, had... don't have, I don't have the mobile version. <laughs> I had the game. I, all I had was the GameCube version uh, and the PlayStation 4 version, I think. Yeah. <sighs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's part of the live stream. And, and this is funny to me, actually. Um, on the live stream, they announced that there's a VR version of Resident Evil 4 coming to the Oculus Quest 2. Uh, Blaine, you did not, you were very confused when people were bringing this up because you're like, I was watching the entire, or me speaking to you. Watching you were watching Switch. the entire, yeah, and this was not part of Sony's version of the stream because they didn't want to advertise weird. Oculus. Yeah, they want, because they, they have their own PSVR. Um, it looks really cool. I wish I could play it. <laughs> but I'm not going to be able to because I am not going to go out and buy an Oculus. I I think I have the space now to do it in my in my new living situation. So and and it's not just it doesn't look like just like a basic ass port where it's just like a 2D screen in front of you and you're playing like that. Like yeah, no, you're like you're in first person perspective. You see the guns and everything. It's it looks cool. I am mm-hmm. yeah. this might because there's a couple things that are on VR now that are kind of giving me the push to could kind of jump into it mm-hmm. um it, it's like half-life alex beat saber um shit what's another one super hot vr and and this like th- those are the four i'm thinking of just like I, that's what i want vr for so if I any eagle-eyed viewers can see because i can't see because my screen is small i have both chainsaw controllers back there in their boxes oh you have the I'm ps2 one also nerd. Yes, I have the PS2. I bought the PS2 one at a GameStop. Um, I don't know how many years ago. I bought the ga- the the GameCube. The yeah, actually, the GameCube one on eBay a long time ago. I got it like new still. Um, I've only used both of them basically once to play the game. I be- I think I beat the game with the chainsaw controller on the GameCube. I used the PlayStation 2 one for like a few hours and then realized, oh god, the, the blood flakes are coming off of my hands. I better not use this. Question. Is the PS2 chainsaw controller is god awful as a GameCube one? Because that GameCube controller is like the most freaking un- ergonomic, like buttons all in weird ass places. It is not a good controller I'll to be real, actually play on. I had very little problems with either one, so I'm not the best person to ask that. I know it is an issue. It's just I didn't have that issue, so like I wouldn't be able to tell. I it's, will it's e- say. It's even it's cool weird, like, that you the can way... lift the con- 
I'm, you, I'm sorry. You, you say what you're going to say. Okay. Uh, yeah. So just like even the way you're supposed to hold it, it's like there's a grip right here and there's a grip right here for like the two handles. Yeah. Up instead on the it's analog, like this. Yeah. Up on the analog stick, you're supposed to like press up, which is already like the top right or whatever. And then the C stick doesn't even go the same direction. It's going the opposite. So it's just yeah, like it's a like, weird it's little. It's like they expect you to hold it like this instead of like this, which is how you would assume it would be because it's a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. um, with the one for PS2, it is like this is the handle and this is instead of a, a bar, the bar is like this, it's like a little squishy handle. Um, but again, the drawback is that if you play for a long time and you have sweaty hands like me, you may rub off some of the paint. And I think each one of those had like a unique splatter of paint blood on it. So huh. yeah. it's really cool. You can lift it though. And it fucking puts his, his gun into ready position. It's fucking cool. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and jump into some of the other news. Cause we, damn, we spent like an hour talking about resident evil, which hey, uh, fav yeah. my favorite franchise of all goddamn time. time. So I and am then, always happy then, to talk resident evil real quick. And then, Next weekend it, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time is the, or Saturday, I should say, is the castle level for PlayStation 4 and 5 uh, players. Nice. So, yeah. I might be too deep into fucking near to you think about that, but. You have till 1 a.m. on Sunday to play it. <laughs> Look. <laughs> I have history with this game. Okay. okay. Well, if anything, May 1st, you can, you can play both levels and you have 60 minutes of gameplay yeah so well you can choose one or the other or you can play both it's a pretty yes. good option yeah exactly if nice. you do if you manage your time enough you can play both you can fucking blast through the village demo in like three minutes oh yeah it's crazy mm -hmm. but next topic jose yes uh, Bloomberg's Jason Schreier's reported that Sony is currently working on a remake for 2013's The Last of Us. Uh, Sony Ben Studio, whose sequel to their wide-selling Days Gone, never received a green light for a sequel. Uh, so they've had one team shifted to work on a Naughty Dog multiplayer title, which is assumably The Last of Us 2's multiplayer component, and another team to create an entirely new spin-off and charted game under direct supervision from Naughty Dog. Um... Ben Studio leadership became disenfranchised with a decision and left the and left the studio, uh, with the studio as a whole fearing being absorbed into Naughty Dog. Leadership later asked to be taken off. Of, um, let me redo that sentence. It came off fucking awful. Uh, leadership later asked to be taken off of Uncharted and are now working on a new game. Uh, the Last of Us remake is now being developed in house by Naughty Dog with support from uh, Sony Sony Core's uh, Visual Arts Service Group, otherwise known as uh, VS, VASG. Uh, who originally pitched the idea of a remake after growing tired of being purely uh, a support development studio. So they've kind of like had their hands in like basically every single Sony exclusive that's come out, but they've never like led the charge on their own original game development. Mm -hmm. um, as we were talking about on the pre-show, I guess before he we went live, um, this is a much different story than from what I've written out two weeks ago, because there's just been constant uh, updates, whether it's, We'll, we'll get into the days gone aspect of it after this with, with people talking out their ass and then uh, Jason Schreier elaborating and stuff. So uh, in an interview with mid max, Jason Schreier elaborated on his original story, which I don't know why he hasn't updated the story with putting these in here because it completely changes the context of basically everything in there. Uh, he elaborated that uh, following the release of the last of us part two, naughty dog employees, not necessary for the development of the multiplayer component of the game, uh, still needed a project to work on while new ideas incubate. So while they're planning on going into pre-production, there's a bunch of developers just kind of sitting around. They don't necessarily have anything to work on. And that's why the um, shifting production of the remake in house was why that that's why that decision was made. They inherently know the ins and outs of the game versus having a, a third party do it. Um, so yeah, the, production of remake fulfills that role for letting them have something to work on and just as the case is with the original last of us um remaster that was on the playstation 4 that i believe came out 2014 um this is helping naughty dog kind of learn the ins and outs of the playstation 5 hardware um kind of for like so they basically use the last of us remaster from 2014 in order to get a proper grip on how they should go about working on Uncharted 4, which is their first PlayStation 4 title. Mm. 
Um, in addition to visual upgrades only possible from a ground-up approach, i.e. the differences between the PlayStation 3 remaster of Shadow of the Colossus versus the PlayStation 4 remake, which looks substantially different, uh, this new iteration will apparently take advantage of gameplay enhancements and mechanics present in The Last of Us Part 2 to kind of make them a bit more of a cohesive package. Um, Schreier reiterates that the development of this remake is infinitely easier to develop in contrast to crunching on a new game. So in that regard, for the developers at Naughty Dog, this is a much more relaxed experience. Um, and oh, he also okay, so, states... Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, Go I'll ahead. just say this last line. It's the last one I have anyway. Mm -hmm. um, he also says that this, that this should not be taken as a sign of Sony become risk adverse for smaller titles. And uh, just as my own little notes... Um, I don't think Sony's going to be like risk adverse. Like they're just going to be played like as safe as possible, like a EA or Activision, or whatever. I mean, you can just look at the nar at the narrative of The Last of Us Two, and like at least like it's in the scope of AAA games. I would say that that story was highly controversial and very not risk adverse in the slightest. But uh, go ahead, Corey. So basically, it's like it's going to be a complete. Uh, like, is it a completely different like story, or is it? No, it, it's I, literally, I, I, it's literally just like a PS5 remaster, essentially. It, it, I, th I think the terminology gets mixed around a lot, and, and at least the way that I understand the differences between remaster and remake, a remaster is typically maybe putting some better textures in there, um, up resing the game. But they kind of can't fundamentally mess with the lighting too much unless they go like heavy into it. Um, so, uh, what's what's an analogy I want I want to use? And, and we'll kind of use a shadow of the Colossus as an example. You can make a tree better by by propping it up with another wood so that it can it can grow better. But if you have if you want to like do radical changes to it, you got to uproot the entire thing and maybe just start from scratch. So, okay, so they're making the exact same game. It's just to play and look better on new consoles, kind of like how Demon Souls was made. Yeah, and they're 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 going to be adding stuff from The Last of Us uh, Part Two, like some of the stealth mechanics, some of the. Um, they're, they're still going to be using the same performances. They're not going to be making like any story changes or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's it's purely just to, um, it, it's it's doing what a remaster fundamentally can't because um, okay. i've played I mean, shadow I, i've played shadow of the colossus extensively and that in that playstation 4 remake looks so much better than that playstation 3 remaster it's it's and I that's mean, because that sounds, they did it from the ground up that that's that not pretty cool though. yeah because the last of us one was you know and still is fan freaking tastic and like to be able to play it in you know 60 frames a second at 4k or, or if you want to do like you know ray tracing and stuff, it's just going to be even scarier. And like, mm -hmm. I, I think ray tracing is a big one. Is that that's not necessarily something you can just go back to older games, yeah. and implement. Like you have to, you have to build stuff with that feature set in mind. Like I know there's mm -hmm. there's like stuff with uh, with auto HDR at least on um on Microsoft's end, but that's uh, that, that's not the same thing as is it, it's not as intensive as ray tracing. So. Right. Uh, Blaine, I know you have some opposite thoughts. I don't know if maybe any of that changed your context for it, but if you want to go ahead and give your thoughts. Um, they don't change my general opinion, but it does change what I would have said in response to all that. I... Regardless of the discussion of this proving or disproving that Naughty Dog and, by association, Sony are afraid of uh, taking risks. I feel like... I feel like this is still kind of an unnecessary thing to be done. I think the remaster looks fantastic. I, I don't know if you really need this at all. Um, it's funny also for me to think about, like, or, taking two... Or just just to build off that real quick, because I think I agree with you on this point, that that remaster is still readily available and it looks and it yeah. plays great. It it's yeah, like, and like it, 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 there's nothing fundamentally wrong with it. No, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, I just I'm trying to be careful with my words here because 
for once I actually don't have a lot of like BAM like to say about this. Um yeah, I find it unnecessary still fundamentally, but I don't then th I don't then think like well this like you said, this automatically means they're not gonna take risks. I think now this means I wanna wait and see what happens. Because now, instead of it, originally what it seemed like was, because what you, um, I just because I want to make sure I, I heard you correctly, it was that the section of Studio Bend that is helping on this potential remake was the same studio that would basically had a hand in almost every Sony exclusive property for the last few years. That would be uh, VASG, and then um, Bend was helping in some capacity as well, some other okay. Naughty Dog projects. And I think a lot okay. of the, I think a lot of the discussion kind of got, uh, sidetracked because it was kind of like so intermingled with uh, the Days Gone stuff and I really wish uh, Schreier would put this uh, not even necessarily new information in that story but just like to put it in there because when people saw like wow wow and we'll get into this in a second when we go to the other story yeah. just like wow Days Gone sold a lot and they're not going to green light it why are they being risk adverse just because it only got a 70 there's a lot of underlying issues that we'll get into there no, no, no um, exactly. It, it, it's not Sony necessarily being risk adverse. Just like it only got a seventy, we're not going to do it. There, there's other stuff. So I think a I, lot of I that guess, conversation got sidetracked. I guess my main point is, I feel like while this doesn't necessarily prove that this company is any more or less risk adverse than originally, I think still fundamentally, what a lot of people like people who treat this as, oh my god, now they don't want to take risks anymore. My brain is kind of more like. I mean, no major AAA publisher wants to take risks anymore. None of them want to take risks. Because through through their own fucking around in the AAA sphere, they... they <laughs> let me... Let me, let me I, I, this is so cute. Um, but I, I'm trying to keep... Get my thoughts in a row. Um, I think Bob Vids actually made a really good point that... Um, in regards to the comment made by the idiot that we're going to discuss in a little bit, um, how the industry seems to like to blame outside sources for things it has caused. And one of those things is, if I remember correctly, what Bob had said is that as far as like an obsession over like return on investment, obsession over return on investment of these games cost so much to make, so we have to do things like microtransactions and loot boxes and 60 to 70 and all this other shit. Um, and it really it, it comes down to this where it's like yeah no, uh, sorry i'm going i'm getting in circles i'm going to try and get back to the point is that you know we can sit here and debate all day like oh um this now means that they're less they're the, oh they don't want to take any risks and it's like well none of these publishers want to take risks they want to make their money back and most of the time that's what they use to justify a lot of other shit so it doesn't surprise me that they wouldn't want to green light a sequel for a game even that it sold well that also had like middling to to uh, divisive reviews. Let's put it that way, um, and just especially with the climate of the way things are, that like they keep making games more and more expensive to make. They respect the workers less and less. Um, they want to crunch more and more. So eventually, something's going to have to give. And I don't think that. Sorry, I'm going completely off base here. Here, here. Um, let's go ahead and bring me retract. back. Bring me back, yeah, please. Yeah. Let's retract a little bit because we'll we'll go into the days gone. Like pretty much as yeah. soon as we're done with this. Uh, specifically in regards to the Last of Us component of this. Um, because I think you're you're trying to go on like the risk adverse stuff for it. Like specifically for Last of Us, I was trying to say. Believe I believe you said it was it was uh it's kind of unnecessary because that remaster already exists and it and is already functional. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that that's and absolutely fair. Yeah, it is. It, it's, it's functional. It exists. It's unnecessary, and um, it's no indication of them wanting to take less risks. It's no more than any company doesn't want to take risks. That's the point I was trying to make. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think after all of the all the you know the shit hitting the fan with the Last of Us Part Two for a bunch of different reasons, I feel like they're literally doing this to take it easy for a while, and like. Mm -hmm. It's 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 definitely the easy route, basically. Uh, they don't want to pursue. They don't want to risk. They don't want to pursue any fresh ideas. Uh, they don't want to take a chance right now until 
you know, they're able to come out with something that will guarantee them success. Well, a lot of it has to do with a lot of their crunch culture coming to light. And then um, they're they're just like incubating ideas like Naughty Dog's a studio that likes to take its time on stuff. So all those like main production people that aren't necessarily pre-production, they they just need something to do. And this seems like the perfect um, fit for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but that being said, um, this this will probably be my last set on, I guess. Um, As much as it can be seen as... um, as unnecessary given that that remaster already exists if it's ultimately the better product at the end of the day i'm going to be happy about it i'm gonna, probably going to play it yeah yeah i mean I I'll, but that- as, as far as new game goes i don't i don't expect to see a new game from naughty dog for probably close to the end of the decade yeah honestly yeah. it's gonna be a quick minute mm-hmm. and um, um yeah i mean Damn, sorry. I had like one other thing to add, and my brain's doing that thing again. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I mean, until I guess until we find out, you know, because we really we never found out the full full story of Schreier's investigation. We just know what his investigation kind of. He he told us what he had heard from people, and he put it out what needed to be put out. Naughty Dog did their response. Game came out, and then you know it all just kind of went quiet as these these stories often do, and mm-hmm. the spotlight's not on the game that everybody likes anymore. I was thinking about this the other day, just like in regards to other things, the ultimate PR strategy anybody or any group organization can do is to literally just shut their fucking mouth. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you keep the conversation going, at least it's out there, but just know like that's the ultimate thing that people can use to just shut down discussion. But uh, yeah, but on um, Blaine's note, it, it, it eventually it all fizzled out, you know? Yeah. People got people got tired. People moved on as they always do. There's going to be a bigger fish to fry. Like how, how relieved do you think um, Sony slash Naughty Dog was the second everyone like shifted over to talking about um, cyberpunk. At, like oh, at least they were out of the crosshair oh, yeah. for the bit. Yeah, exactly. And cyberpunk was just an absolute shit show. Neil Druckmann put front. down his phone, wiped the sweat from his brow, and went. Oh, for once it ain't me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Suck my dick, Neil, from the back. Yeah. I guess let's uh, go ahead and um jump into the days gone component of this. Um so yeah, to build off the last story, let's reiterate that Days Gone sold it like an astronomical amount of units, which is surprising given that it did not have a high critical reception. Um, so it was, it's not that Days Gone 2 was canceled, it's that it was never greenlit in the first place. Mm -hmm. Um, so in a series of interviews held by David Jaffe, who's the creator of God of War and Twisted Metal series, who's a fucking asshat, that platform's bigotry and tried to come at me, so fuck you, buddy. Uh, (laughs) uh, he had an interview with, uh, Days Gone directors Jeff Ross and John Garvin and, uh, revealed a slew of behind the scenes information. So according to Garvin, Metacritic is everything. This and th- this is them saying this. This is not necessarily 100% fact. Th- these are their words. Uh, so according to Garvin, Metacritic is everything to Sony. So uh, even a title that sells as well as Days Gone won't necessarily be greenlit for a second chance if it receives a Metacritic score of 71. Um, my words here. Uh, it's worth noting that sequels tend to have easier production cycles and typically alleviate woes from their predecessors. So you can look at like something like Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2, Assassin's Creed 1, Assassin's Creed 2. Um, and in contrast, a title such as Gravity Rush 2 can receive a Metacritic score of 80 and not sell well, which can also prompt the lack of a greenlit sequel. So it's it's a myriad of factors. As you can see by some of the other stuff we're going to list, this dude's trying to push the blame on a bunch of other multiple things and we'll get to the core of why days gone two was never greenlit. Mm. Uh, Garvin is quick to place the blame of days gone shortcomings on a multitude of factors, such as blaming gamers for not buying games at launch at full price, uh, stating if you love a game, buy it at fucking full price. I can't tell you how many times I've seen gamers say, yeah, I got that on sale. I got that on PS plus, whatever. Um, so let alone the fact that audiences are unable to tell if they love a product before they even buy it because it doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, shaming players for not placing blind faith in a title that's received middling review scores isn't great optics. Um, it also kind of ignores that, uh, sales play 
that uh, discounted sales play a central focal point in expanding audiences. That's how games got not not even necessarily cold sales. Like this is just this is just the way the market works now. Sales yeah. uh, can still be uh, widely successful. Um, it's also worth noting that Days Gone suffered an extremely troubled development cycle over its seven year production. So that would be seven even before years? Jesus Christ. Yeah, seven fucking years. Jeez. Um, this point in particular served as a sticking point to Sony, who wanted to push the final product out the door to recuperate their sunk costs. Uh, Garvin departed the studio due to personality clashes, not because of any perceived failures as a creative director. Uh, Jason Schreier backs this up by citing tension between the old guard of Ben Studio and newer talents, uh, often clashing with one another, with Garvin yelling at, a, yelling at employees on countless occasions. Uh, Garvin himself admits to being unable to adapt to working with a larger team due to personality clashes, and that training and classes designated to improve his behavior were unsuccessful. Um, if this is evident anywhere, all you have to do is look at Garvin blaming Days Gone shortcomings on not appealing to a wider audience and implementing, quotes, a woke and politically correct elements. So, there you have it. The director was kind of a fucking shithead. Just mm-hmm. all around. Like, so so many production woes. It, it, it's, this is entirely a leadership problem. And he's kicking and screaming, blaming everything in the world. Because, like, Days Gone isn't a fundamentally bad game, and, like, they improved it um, past um, what reviewers played, because they, they updated it, so it's a smoother experience, whatever. I, th- I think it's a pretty middle-of-the-road, pretty good game, and it sold well, but Sony's just kind of had it up to there with with um, with Ben, basically. I'm right. enjoying what I'm playing of it right now, because I, I mean kiss my ass whatever i'm playing it on ps plus right now um that means and... you don't love it you didn't buy it at full price do you want the video game market to crash blaine i think i, I already sunk over 200 dollars and didn't pa- leave me the fuck alone pa- um, papa codic needs that needs that fifth yacht come on blaine <laughs> no 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 codic doesn't need a fifth yacht he needs he, he needs to pay me back for his fourth one <sighs> <sighs> i almost want to answer this anecdotally in that there's there's a show called Bojack Horseman that the entire premise is a wildly problematic main character that you're not supposed to sympathize with goes on very admittedly wacky antics but usually circles back to commentary on abusive or toxic relationships um, people's inability there's a kitten looking around that corner of that uh, curtain um, <laughs> I see <laughs> j- um uh, or or think substance things that are dealing with substance abuse, dealing with mental illness, um, a lot of other things, and, mm-hmm. and you know just very dark themes. Yeah, not things that you would call, typically call woke or politically correct. Yeah. Um. There's. There's. Oh, I had the next one lined up in my head, and now oh, um, one of the most celebrated, uh, like, uh, c- sort of cop drama, but I almost consider it the anti-cop drama that I've seen in years is True Detective a series with two of the most unlikable, like despicable, despisable main characters, but they're mm-hmm. written specifically so that you don't empathize with them. Right. And any level that you do kind of sympathize with what they're going through is completely th- washed away by the fact of you see like a very, one of the most realistic depictions of the police that I've ever seen, like actually showing how corrupt and disgusting it is. Um, yeah. Never. And, and you know, that's, that's a, popular ass show even now that first season of true detective Mm -hmm. um i mean i could start naming things venture brothers until i got canceled was one of the most popular cartoons and adult meet adult cartoons and media and was not just subversive not just made political commentary but was also not what i would call pc or woke even to a detriment in its earlier seasons and that i regret but found its footing and eventually it didn't lose an edge of like being able to say like some whack at some like wild ass shit, but it managed to stop punching down at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason I say all this is because just because people told you your writing is not all that and your characters suck doesn't mean that the SJWs are coming to just fucking with their pitchforks and that's why they don't understand well, your game. Well, I think that's I get, the thing. Um, uh, I get that Deacon and his and Boozer, I, I'm barely in the game, but I get, and I'm starting to talk over you, just I gotta get this thought out. 
I get that these characters are very transparently not supposed to be people that you necessarily empathize with, but that you want to see where their stories go. I understand that it's supposed to put you in maybe a different headspace than your own. I understand, like, when they give you two ca- encampments, and they're both run by fucking terrible people, that you're supposed to be stuck in this situation of, God, well, what, what decision do I make when I don't have an easy yes or no? But that being said, it's all done so bluntly and ham-fistedly that, like, I'm, I'm not engaged by this on any major level. I'm just kind of, like, finding things that I enjoy in between going, okay, yeah, that's your typical brutalist, survivalist, a post-apocalyptic zombie thing. Yeah, and I think on, the, on those lines, it's like, if something is made for, for a concept or made, uh, it makes sense within its own universe or its own world and everything, even if things are quote-unquote offensive, if, I, I, I don't like the idea of people literally crying wolf and being like, oh, uh, if there's any criticism on my, on my art, it just means automatically these, this group of people are coming for me and, and they didn't actually you know, take in my, the form of media that is being presented to well, them. Well, for so, context too, um, because uh, how far are you in the story, Blaine? I, I'm not going to spoil anything. No, no, no. I, I just gonna... met uh, Tucker. And okay. I'm, I'm literally my my PS4 is on rest mode because I didn't know that it was going to hit me with the decision when I got to the bike. Mm-hmm. I have to choose to give her a bunch of drugs, or I have to choose to give Copeland a bunch of drugs, and I don't really want to give either of them drugs because one of them is running like a borderline fascist fucking prison camp and slave camp, and the mm-hmm. other one is like a weird gun nut truther first Second Amendment nut job. Yeah. So I'm just like. This sucks, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I get it. I mean, the writing in that is actually not bad. Yeah. It's, it's, so, so I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm just going to talk in like broad generalizations. Like, um, this uh, director, what's his name, Garvin? Like him kicking and screaming, saying like, "Oh, the game didn't, uh, isn't doing well. They we're not getting green because we're not woke enough." Um, it is highly ironic considering they position their main character as being. A diametrically opposed to every single thing in this game like uh both tucker and uh what's the other dude's name copeland that runs the other camp mark copeland like, i like, think like, is his name like he'll hear him over the radio doing like some fucking like nra bullshit and yeah and, and deacon is like literally screaming at the radio by himself it's like this is so stupid what the fuck that's it i actually like those bits. Idea. i yeah. like when he just starts talking to himself because i do shit like that but yeah he, he's like so evidently opposed to it and it's like so it's, it's, it's obviously shining like those two camps in an extremely negative light like regardless yeah. of how um quote unquote necessary or like those are the only options in the world like that that's a separate thing mm-hmm. but um later on in the game there is a um there's an lgbt relationship later on in the game so him just being like oh we're not woke enough like it, like this like i don't even know where this narrative came from that this game is like some kind of like fucking right wing wet dream i'm just like no this this game is very much not that and you you did have those elements so for you blaming the the failures of your game on not having those elements despite them being implemented in there i like this guy's just talking out of his ass the biggest criticism i've ever heard of the game was people saying that especially in the back half that it feels rushed both narr- it feels rushed narratively and that I've even heard people say that it seemed like there were going to be it, in certain situations it almost there's there's things that happen I, I'm also trying because I know some spoilers but I don't know the full context so I'm also trying not to if anyone does play it it's on PS uh, plus and I don't necessarily want to spoil the story for you um, but like I know that there's apparently like ways the story goes that almost feel like completely opposed to how Deacon has behaved as a character up to that point. Almost as if you could have chosen two paths and kind of gone down different narratives when instead they didn't have time to finish that. This is a theory I've seen someone say. I don't know if this is actually true. I I will back that up to a degree in that it definitely feels like at some point they decided to cut that stuff off because like the central issue I have with that game is it is it just might be the so... stuff with Boozer that you've alluded to to me that I know exists, but um, I don't know what it is. I don't remember what it is. I just know that there's something involving him where you find out he's like worse than you th- would have thought, but you're not really given any option to challenge him or something. You're just kind of, you can go with it and finish the quest or you can just not complete the quest. From what I maybe, maybe I don't remember what that's in regards to, but I was thinking more s- 
I, I, I won't say what it is, but it, it is yeah. definitely the lat in the latter half of the game where it would seem like it's some kind of like end game or like mid near end game choice that you do. Um, but that game is just so extremely bloated and they spent seven years on this with like no clear direction and kind of stumbling over themselves. Uh, they could, they could have shaved a lot of years of development if they had just tried to make a more concise product and that would have in turn just made a better game. It's, it's, it's a mess. I almost wonder like. There's bits of like the open world that I really because it's weird. Usually I you know me I'm not like I get very intimidated by open world like especially Ubisoft style open world games where it's just like all these things on the map and you got to do them all because my brain just goes you need to. With this one I actually really find it charming that it almost reminds me of like the first Red Dead Redemption and maybe to other degrees the second one where like you'll have stuff that just happens and it genuinely feels organic even though I know it's all scripted or like procedurally scripted like there are events that are gonna happen no matter what but like where they might happen on the map is different like uh you can randomly stumble across like a scene just blood on the ground or a bike or something and you're saying go examine it so you examine it and then you examine another thing you track and then you find your way to like a murdered camp or one time when i th- I did that i found like a bunch of killed uh drifters and i was like oh a bunch of freaks are around and i killed them and then i looted the bodies and that's the end of that little like mini side quest but then another time i found a bike and a thing to examine and when i'm following the trail i'm literally following the map because that's what the game told me to do last time and without realizing it step into a snare and i get captured and i'm like oh, is this just going to reset me to a checkpoint like when I failed this one thing? And then I'm like, oh, no, it actually has me being captured and now I have to escape. Like, that's cool. That's mm-hmm. good. Um, but, like, but then there's other shit. Like, I don't know. Like, there's stuff that still feels, like, almost kind of unnecessary. Like, like I don't know. Like, the infestations are cool, but it also made me think of, like, I'm basically playing State of Decay 2 and just destroying play carts. And it's mm-hmm. like, I get it. I get it, but at the same time, I don't know. Is this just padding, or is what I'm asking myself? Fifty percent of that game is padding. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and and I'm starting to see that. Plus, then they do the whole thing of like, oh, you have your cool bike in the beginning, and then it gets broken, and you have it stolen, so you have to rebuild it. And I'm like, okay, we're we're doing like a Metroid the, thing with that. The early hours of that game are not great. It I is actually not doing- don't. I'm not disliking it. I'm just. I'm. I guess it's because I'm just so. I'm so able to look, see the, see the strings that I'm getting better at seeing all the little strings trying to like trick me into thinking things aren't what they are. And like. mm-hmm. Also white balance, please, for the love of God, don't fucking make your menu <laughs> screen just all white. I spent like two days trying to think, is it my TV? Is it not? And no, it wasn't my TV. It was just the fucking screen is too bright. My eyes had to adjust. <laughs> I yeah. I use dark themes on like basically everything I use. Mm-hmm. Just, I nothing kills me more than just like a bright white screen. I'm just like no, no, thank you. Just use black. It's it's fine. <laughs> Literally, it's better. Uh, side note: uh, there was a man that was reported to have created uh, the whitest white so far known to man that reflects 98 percent of the sun's rays. Sweet Jesus. <laughs> I need to Google that later. I don't want to, but I'm going to have to. It's insane. <laughs> oh, and um, uh, to get back to the original point, like, uh, I mean, you pretty much said it, Jose, before, with, like, you know, I, I, can under- I understand, because uh, someone I think we both follow, I don't want to name names, because I'm actually not, I'm not trying to put him on blast. I disagreed with one of his takes, but he made some really other good points. Um, I think, I understand someone being very emotionally charged and being like invested in something like you put seven years of your life into this. So I don't even want to fault the guy for maybe feeling strongly about what he made and feeling defensive of it. But Mm -hmm. then, then say that, then say, you know, it sucks when you put seven years of your life into something. And for one bullshit reason or another, um, you just, it's like, fuck you. You don't get to have a second shot. Like, I don't even think the comment the literal comment if you want to, if you want like i'm going to boil his thing down even further the idea of if you want to see more of the thing support the thing emphatically support the thing put your money towards it if you can afford it i think we can all agree that it is a good thing to say like hey if you really like that thing spend the money on it and try, try to support it because that will at least do something to get more things but when you twist that 
concept around to be like well i well like like when you t- that, that makes sense of a situation where like this like let's say let's say it did phenomenally in reviews and it did like the same amount like decent to low in metacritic and then like they got the no you're not getting a sequel i would this would be a whole different conversation i feel like we would be saying you know it really sucks for this guy because him and his team really busted their asses despite it all this would be like a like a deadly premonition conversation mm-hmm. something like that well, I, th- but, I think to even uh, distill it from there, it's um, yeah. It, it, like if it wasn't, I'm not gonna. I don't want to put solely the blame on him, but even he admittedly does it. Sony did not greenlight it because they have issues with Ben. They don't necessarily have issues with Days Gone. Exactly. Like it sold well, they would have greenlit throwing it. Throwing that IP in the trash. Mm-hmm. We've seen Stranger Things. I mean, I'm not like fuck. Um, we got a Demon Souls remake. <laughs> <laughs> It's like th- this is just such a freaking okay. On uh, one, you already fucked up by going on David Jaffe's stream. That's fuck yeah. up number one. Two, you are burning so many bridges, and you're you're, and you're tainting um, Days Gone's uh, reputation. Yeah. And like three, like how does this benefit you in the slightest besides just bitching and ranting? It like, makes like him incoherently. Sound like a spoiled fucking child. Mm-hmm. It's. You're not doing yourself any favors here, dude. Like, if I if I was a higher up at Sony, I'd be like, dude, can you just please, please shut the fuck up? Yeah, it's it's I I agree with Blaine. I, I think it's like, you know, it, it, it's it's being it's not having sort of any sort of grounding in how how uh, I'm trying to think of right now. I can't think of the word. Uh, Take how. Care. <laughs> how thankful he or grateful he should be for the amount of success that he has already in general. Exactly. And now, and the fact that he's going on a, to, you know, a podcast and ranting and raving and bitching about, you know, all this and all that, like, Oh, you know, it, it's like, what's it called? What's a good example. It's like handing someone a, a brick of gold and then complaining that it's dirty. No, 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 I got even. I even got a better one for you. It's it's someone that gets handed a brick of gold and then f- four years later is saying, "Why is it this platinum?" Yeah, fuckers. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's a really good one. Yeah. It, yeah, it's just I I hate it when people when people don't have perspective or humility. It's like, all right, well, there goes my any respect I had for you. Exactly. Like this, this has literally done nothing to benefit Days Gone the slightest. Aside from people are talking about Days Gone, I guess this is the most people have talked about it since it came out. So, so. in some weird way, I guess his bitching worked. <laughs> it's not even it's not even necessarily getting sales because it's it's free on PS Plus right now or part of the collection. I, and you know what? The the PC version is coming out in May. I guess so. But yeah. yeah. Which that's going to be like 40 or 50 bucks. So, hey. I mean, I also, I still think also, it's a decent game. I still think people should not maybe yeah. should play, it, but it's it's a good game. Well, we also have to think about here's here's the thing. All y'all remember being like tweens or or teenagers, right? And like when you started playing video games and all that stuff. Most of the time, I don't think uh, I don't think like tweens or teenagers are fully involved in the drama of the gaming industry. I think they, the, at least for me, when I was that age, I was like, "Oh, cool game! I want to play it." Plays no, the game, literally. moves on. Mm-hmm. Like it literally, it's like if I like the game, I'll go back to it. But like when you're that age, you don't care. You're not. You don't know anything that's going on in the gaming yeah. industry. You just know what games are being presented to you, uh, and that's it. You know, you're not really fully tuned into to the adult world yet. <laughs> I literally oh, earlier today on Twitter, I remember making a comment that I was just like, you know, not for nothing. I I am actually, despite whatever issues I have with it, what the guy said, like I am genuinely enjoying my time with it, getting into it, and like this is a game that teenage me would have just gone bat shit for like this would have right? been perfect yeah. yeah teenage teenage blaine would be losing her fucking mind would be like this is perfect this is the game i always wanted like it's tailor made mm-hmm. and yeah. i mean that as a compliment i mean that as a compliment like there's good there's tons of people teenagers whatever that like look at the game like that mm-hmm. but then don't fucking spit in their fucking faces with like why didn't you buy it full price then 
dipshit. Yeah. That, that's such a fucking get that's such a shitty thing to say to people. Is because it's, it's, it's like one, it's already contradictory. You should buy a game you love at full price. Like motherfucker, how are you supposed to know if you love it if you don't have it yet? It's well, yeah, no, it's just like yeah. I mean, you, you should like, never. I, I used to I used to work at GameStop, and you know how you know how many times I would get people coming in to return a brand new game that they unwrapped, but the policy was that we couldn't we couldn't return games that have already broken the seal, which literally makes zero sense considering yeah. it's like. How does someone know they like a game if they haven't been able to play it yet? Well, see, that, you know? that's why even I, I don't want to get too sidetracked, but like that's why I love Steam's refund policy. Like you can play up to two hours or um, like 14 days, like from the purchase. It's it's extremely consumer friendly and everyone else needs to catch the fuck up. Yeah. Honestly, also, it seems like I, if you I, just make your case, even if you're over those limits, like as long as you're not being an idiot about it. Like if you make a a, a mm-hmm. legitimate case, they'll usually listen to it. Yeah, you can totally appeal, and their Steam is like crazy generous with it. Oh yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, on that note, GameStop can burn. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> I it, like it, it's just it is so shitty to try to shame your your player base, and it's uh you know especially now with 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 the end times. Well, the end times seem to be coming to somewhat of an end, relatively quick, like in some fashion. <laughs> Um, just this you can't expect everyone to just be rushing out there to spend 60 or I guess like now even $70 like I I usually have so many games on my backlog like unless it's something I'm like crazy hyped for for like um like Resident Evil Village I'm not gonna buy your game at launch at full price I'm gonna wait for it to go yeah. on sale I'll, I'll, I'll grab it and then I'll probably play it like four months down the road that's exactly what happened with um Yakuza for me yeah um fuck where was I gonna go with that Shit, I can take a segue while you think. <laughs> yeah, can you m- save me, save me, Blaine. Tag, tag. Um, it, it, something else I've been thinking about with this is like, oh damn, now I lost my thought. What? It's <laughs> contagious, Jose. <laughs> what did you do to me? Whoa, what was that? Oh, shit, say? Corey, save <laughs> us. Oh, oh no, I remember, I remember, I remember. Um, it, it, it's also crazy to talk to think about the fact that like. The, the comment of, oh, buy your game at full price if you want to see more. And it's like, well, we've seen in the past, maybe, I mean, maybe I'm too old, but I remember when Capcom and KG Nafune were like, oh, do you want Mega Man Legends 3? Make sure you buy this other game that's not necessarily related, but if you buy it, maybe we'll make the other one. And then they didn't make it. They canceled it. Or they silently, like, never approved it. You get shit like, I mean, that happens time and time again. There is... I hate to say this because it sounds borderline conspiratorial. There's no guarantee that that thing you like is going to get made with the way the video game industry, the AAA mm-hmm. video game industry is. Their metrics are half the time made up bullshit that doesn't make any sense or is not made up, but they don't follow it anyway. Right. Mm-hmm. Like half the what, time, I... I don't mean to jump on my pulpit, but half the time it's them getting mad that why aren't you consumers liking the things that we want you to like? That we mm-hmm. decided you liked without even consulting <laughs> what you actually like. Oh, um, you know what? Uh, Rob, Ramen good. Nomad totally reminded me what I was going to say. Um, so yeah, $60 is a lot to ask for someone if they aren't already excited about it. Yeah. And just like for a, uh, I guess like an aware, uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Informed consumer. Like if they see your game comes out, like even if they're interested and they see like these reviews drop and just like, hey, this game's kind of a mess right now. It's got a lot of technical issues. Wait for them to patch it. You can't fucking blame people for not buying it at launch. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh you're going to say something, Corey? Yeah, it's just uh, pretty much the um, in the same light. It, it it's I've I've had many moments where I would uh I would wait. I would be like, oh, you know, I I can wait for that game, or you know, I it, I can I can uh, I can wait till it goes on sale, or maybe it'll go on PlayStation Plus or something. You know, I've had moments like that, like, oh, I'll play it eventually. But I wasn't super thrilled about it. So yeah, it's like paying full price for for a game that people aren't genuinely excited about. And also on on what Blaine was saying is that like, yeah, w- they're saying why aren't you the consumer liking what we want you to like? And I'm just like, I'm like, and, and they and then they sit there and they wonder why they're failing. And it's just it's so it's such a diluted mess uh, that these people that run these companies or run these these groups of people to make games that they just they're deluded 
to the point where they don't actually know what consumers want. Yeah. Uh, they just have they have creative visions, and if the consumers don't like their creative vision, uh, then it's sort of like a personal attack attack on them. And so right. it's this. I, I hate to be judgmental too, and because this is going to sound kind of wild, but it's like it's big part of it is because a lot of these people in charge are not they're not quote unquote gamers. They're not yeah. really people that are into it. And I don't mean like oh you have to be like a card carrying gamer to be and work at a company, but like 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 you know we we joke about like Reggie Fizeme, and like clearly the person the guy's a nice dude I'm sure, um, and he cares about the video games. He cares about the video game industry. That guy wasn't a video game person. He was from fucking Pizza Hut, and before that, I don't know what else, but he was a marketer. He was a marketer and a businessman, first and foremost. And a lot of these people that sign on to these companies to either run their marketing or PR, or even the CEOs, are not people that got in this because, man, I just love video games. They're working a job because they know marketing. And you're going to then get crossover of, like, well, I this is my prediction. And when you're if you're out of touch with that user base... Yeah. Even on that level, you then to, you, you have shit go. like why isn't why isn't the new looty shooty thing selling when we barely fucking put a polish on? Why did Anthem happen? I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, why did Anthem happen? Why didn't why did how come people aren't buying this thing that we did no research on ahead of time but pretended no, they, we did? They definitely need uh way more uh people in there that actually are at least they like video games and they play video games. They they yeah. at least because I feel like if you're gonna be in the video game industry, you should have knowledge of the history of video mm. games as a whole too. Um, yeah. and you should just know your stuff, and you should be in touch with, uh, you know, gamers and gamer focus groups and and all this. You know, uh, really listen to the people that are like coming in and testing the games. You know, for those play tests and stuff mm-hmm. that you come companies like to have and so it's like uh yeah i wholeheartedly agree they're bringing in people that are marketing based but they're not they don't know much about gaming as a whole you yeah. know yeah i th- i thought of a maybe slightly mean joke because because like we're talking about leadership here people i don't have perspective um and um, and uh i think look not the last episode maybe the one before that we we're talking about jim ryan um lacking some perspective on like why people care about game preservation and whatnot and there's just that famous quote just like oh this looks ancient why would anyone want to play with that uh do you think his partner when they when they broach the topic of divorce if they're going to toss that in his face when he's 70 years old they're going to walk up to him and be like jim you look ancient why would anyone want to play with that oh shit <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, On that note, uh, I love you, Jose. Uh, that's going to do it for the show. <laughs> uh, oh, I do want to say one thing before we. I, I know we don't have time to go through what we're replaying, but I do want to just say one thing. Um, I've been playing <laughs> Shadow Man Remastered for the PC build. Um, it's my night dive. I, the reason I'm just I'm shoving this at the end is because you know these guys. It's, we've ta- spent this whole time talking about a bunch of AAA companies that don't know what the fuck they're doing. They don't give a shit about their base. They don't give a shit about the people that get affected by their shitty practices. Their workers that get crunched and whatnot. Um, night dive does amazing work. I feel like if you if you already know probably and and if and if you don't just look through their catalog of games they've redone recently. Shadow Man is the newest one and. It's amazing to see a game like that that I thought was totally forgotten for the longest time actually get its due and be brought into not only just the modern game sphere, but also like just completely revitalized with, with like new lighting and new uh, and new te- not new textures, but you know a new look at those textures. Um, and I also just want to end this on some positivity because I think they deserve your support and they deserve <laughs> a full price buy because they make good stuff and they've proven that. It's true. Doom 64 on the Switch is fucking amazing. Please go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corey, you got any last words of wisdom? Um, any high aspirations? High aspirations. Um, well, I... Oh, I guess the podcast doesn't know because I haven't been here in a while, but I got my first Moderna shot, so that's awesome. Um, and thank you for the dab, Jose. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> May the Lord not strike you down right now. Um, <laughs> uh, and then I believe our my our second shot is basically May fifteenth, so we'll be fully vaccinated by that time. So that's that's my exciting news. You'll be blazing uh, through that, I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hilarious, Blaine. Hilarious. Uh, um, and then secondly, you know, you guys can catch me, obviously, on my channel, King Cory Bear, on Twitch. Um, I stream Monday and Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and Fridays at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram as well. Yeah, Cory's always streaming, so you should uh, definitely check him out. He's definitely chronic about it. <laughs> Yes, uh, I'm very, I'm very consistent now, and I'm actually, I'm very happy because I've met so many different people and made so many different friends just from like delving back into it and really like taking Twitch seriously. So I'm like, I'm, I'm really excited about all of it. And you I have, know, uh, I never have to be dubious about what you're doing either because you're very clear when you put out the tweets and everything. There's no doubt. Yeah, exactly, and that's. That's all. That's pretty much it. Just a nice, cozy corner with your neighborhood king, Cory Bear. <laughs> uh, you are a constant inspiration on that front, Cory. The way that uh, you dedicate to your stream, just like your whole, the entire vibe you have on it. It's not one nice, big family, a kingdom, one might say, of the mm-hmm. Celtic variety. It's not, it's not Celtic anymore, I guess. There's Celtic backtones, but I, uh, I I felt like this name change, this name change from Celtic Scribe, for those that don't know, um, it, it was necessary. And I felt more like me. Obviously, like now my profile picture is different. Everything's different. Everything's sort of gearing towards towards bears, but we're keeping sort of those kingly and medieval Celtic backgrounds as well. So mm-hmm. Plus, now you got to have bear emojis or emotes. Um, yeah, they're so fun. Now you get a persona, more or less. <laughs> I mean, I feel like my entire life I was a fursona, and it was I was meant to be a bear, and that's just there you go. both there in you stature go. and in character. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess on my front, I've uh, yeah been directly inspired by Corey to go ahead and start um, solidifying my plan for Twitch. Um, someone was telling me, and I didn't even really think about it, but you know, I have daily content going out whatever and it is a hell of a production log like i was i looked at my freaking spreadsheet i i use to keep track of when to post stuff uh what's unlisted what's public what's on patreon i'm just like this is basically what i was doing at my old job and it's like it is a big ass fucking spreadsheet this point i'm just like i need a life (laughs) but this time you're doing it for yourself and that's what's that's what counts yeah it's fun but um definitely um solidifying my approach to uh to twitch very very happy with the streams we've been doing been having a great time and Corey has been the most generous planet on the freaking planet the most generous <laughs> planet in. yes hold on is like the most generous planet on the planet got wait, it did, right. wait did i did i call you a planet i don't oh no i guess i guess but i'm not really offended you're, i'm more confused. well you know what you you are the best planet on the planet Corey. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you sure I'm not the one that's high? Like, <laughs> I mean, I might. Wait, was it you? I was telling about the cat thing the other day. The uh, no, wait, was the cat wait, who, thing? Who's I talking to? Okay, th- this is the last thing I'll put. Like, okay, oh, fuck. Let, let me do my Twitch thing real quick. Yeah, yeah go ahead. So yeah, yeah. Do, do it, taking steps to be very proactive on Twitch. Um posting dedicated schedules on a weekly basis so this week i'm streaming uh wednesday thursday and saturday at 5 p.m that kind of goes on for at least two hours uh the the demo the next resident evil village demo will be doing on saturday um having a good time with evil within two it's a fun time thanks everyone for showing up thank you to Corey for uh being the best planet on the planet yes Uh, (laughs) I have, um, uh, I have several moons. <laughs> okay. Fuck. I don't remember who I was telling this. It was somebody though. So, and I, I should probably look this up before I talk out my ass, but it's probably funnier if I do it this way. So take this with a grain of salt. So everyone loves dogs. Dogs are nice, beautiful animals. They love you unconditionally. People also love cats. And apparently something to do with this is that when cats take dumps, they have like tiny 
little parasites in them, whatever, right? And so whenever you smell anything in life, that's only because there's particles physically floating into your nose. So like whenever you smell shit, you literally have shit in your nose. Like if it's, it's a tiny particles, but you literally have shit in your nose. Um, so that tiny little molecule of whatever a parasite in the cat shit gets in your nose and it kind of cordyceps you into being more favorable towards cats. It's kind of brainwashing you to love cats more. <laughs> That's so devious. It's fucking what? evil, dude. <laughs> uh, and then I told Jose that no wonder, um, no wonder that people used to, like the ancient Egyptians used to worship cats. It makes mm-hmm. sense now. You know what? I'm looking it up right now. What, were they just sitting around all day huffing cat shit in bags? Like what? <laughs> I mean, I don't imagine there was much hygiene to the point that we have with cat litter and stuff. So. I think cats just like shit in fields and grass and like the, the city grounds and stuff. I don't like this. Here, here, here's a <laughs> science weird. magazine organization website. I'll post the link here. I, I, I don't have the time to like verify this to peer review it or anything like that. But I'm not from, reading it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, shit, where is it? Scientists uh-huh. have long hypothesized that T. Gandhi plays a role in mental. No, fuck. Where was it? I don't know. Re- read the article. I, but this is a thing, apparently. Oh, oh and then cats. The article, also, remember. one last thing that Chaibum reminded me of. Uh, this is my last word, and, and is that uh, Devour, for those that do not know, uh, this super spooky multiplayer game about Demon Lady where you burn goats. Uh, yeah, that is getting a brand spanking new level. Oh, really? Um, yeah, it's on Wednesday. Uh, it's called The Asylum, and it continues the story from the first level. Uh, so I'm excited. Nice. To play it. Are you, are you going to be streaming that with a full crew too? Oh yeah, you know it. Nice. Definitely check out uh, Corey's stream for that on Wednesday. Not Wednesday, Friday. Friday. Yes, yeah, I will. Be, Friday. I will be there. I will, I will watch. It comes out Wednesday, but we're going to get some practice in, and then we're going to play. We're going to stream it Friday. So nice. All right, and with that, I think that's the show. Thank you everyone for hanging out. Um, at the next stream, at least on this channel, is going to be Wednesday at 5 p.m. PST. All right. Woo. See you guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.